finished the lap. I've got my grooves. There's five equally spaced grooves going down the side. I've got some fine grit. Thumblers, tumblers. <laughs> it's nothing. Uh, I don't even think this is what I'm supposed to be using for rock tumbling. But I believe this is silicon carbide. Oh, my battery's dead. That's why I quit earlier. Alright, so oil and this. I'm pressing it right now into the uh, aluminum and then I'll be back gear and into the spindle. While the camera was charging I had to uh, I lapped. So and I noticed that the wear pattern was a little high and I had read that it was this was a danger of using a, a tapered lap in the first place was that you were going to bell mouth the uh, large diameter. So I went and corrected. I put it back in the machine and I turned the taper again. This time I turned it slightly less taper. There is uh, the small end is larger than the large end. So that, and I already put this in and I'm getting contact area down at the bottom side. So this is where I, this is what I'm going to go with with my. Uh, what's considered fine grit but this is coarse to me so uh, this is my working grit so I've got it in bag gear I got my screwdriver to hold the thing and uh, here I'll turn the speed down a bit and we'll start again and I'm just letting the uh, the taper float in there I'm not really pressing it I'm feeling that I want the grains to roll around between the tapers like bearings, like BBs. And every once in a while I'll pull it back out and you can see yep, you can see the wear pattern here to here. So I'm get, that's good. That's right where I want it to be. And uh, then when I get done with this I'm going to uh, put some fine grit what would be considered rock polish just because I don't have any other polish here figure if it can polish rock it can polish steel um, I'm going to use some fine polish and I'm going to use the, the stainless steel that I'm making as the dead center so I'll stop using this sacrificial one and I'll lap the two of those together with each other and it didn't take very much on this, you can probably turn it up a little. All right, and you can see that's you can see the wear pattern. That's pretty evident. I'm getting good contact, but it's wearing more down here, and you can even see some minor contact here. So we're doing good. I'm thinking that's pretty good. I don't know. Uh, I'll try again here. I mean, this is about how much I worked it before, and I stopped and checked. And it looks we're getting good contact all the way around. You can see that. I'm gonna cut this off, clean out the inside of the bore and I'll blue the stainless steel and I'll show you that. So, as a matter of fact, before I get into uh, cleaning this all out, I'm just gonna run these two together and so with the existing grit that's in there and we'll see uh, if it grips and rips it out of my hand then we've done a good job. Yeah, actually we should be able to see a pretty good wear pattern on these. Ah, and look at that, that's uh, that's where we're 
my taper goes from here to here, but it's dead center. So I'll just keep working that a little bit. My spots there. I'm gonna put a little bit of grit on this. All right, now I've wiped uh, some WD-40 and pre-polish on here. We'll run this. And I should have that cover over the ways because I can see it wanting to drip. On the grip. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, oh I think I lost it. <laughs> I lost it. It sucked in there. Oh, it's in there. It's in there. I think I've achieved fit just about. Get my ram and push it out. I know I turned the camera on for a reason. Boy, that was that was in there. Let's try running it again just to make sure that that wasn't some anomaly, anomalous. Oh, it wants, it wants to pull it in there. I can feel it gripping. Oh, I just lost it again. It's not coming out. <laughs> I think I've pretty much achieved it there. I could put polish on it. I mean, I don't know that there's a reason to really go super high luster, other than it provides more contact area. And a better finish. Oh, look at that. That's nice. Uh, although I was rubbing it back and forth, but that's good contact area. It's, I took out any uh, machine marks. Not really. It has smoothed it. But it hasn't really taken out any machining marks. You can. I can still feel them. All the I got no way to fingernails to tell you, but uh yeah, it's still the same shape that it was. It has not altered shape here. There's a little ridge right here at the back, but let's try uh Well, I think that's good. That gripped in as well as it did without me even slamming it in. I think we're done here. I think I think I've accomplished what I wanted to accomplish. I could blue this and put it in, but you can see the wear marks on here.
there's no reason to blue that you can see that All right yeah there you go good so a new addition, a new part. Now I just got to clean up all of this grit because it's everywhere and I don't want it on my ways and I don't want it in my spindle. I don't want it anywhere near my lathe. But it was something that had to be done. So uh, now for the cleanup procedure. Alright, so I've set back up, lapped the center. It's driven into the headstock. Now I'm going to cut the taper the angle for the dead center here. I've got my compound set at 30 degrees. I checked it against my uh, live center with a straight edge straight across this way and this angle on this side and this angle line right up. So I uh, checked against the live center here. It's close by eye. I guess I can print out a gauge to check it for 60 degrees later but uh, I don't have one right now. Oil it up real quick, and then we'll start on these cuts. I have to get some more spindle lube. Consumables, right?
believe that's it. I think I scored. Nice and smooth. It's not a real sharp point. I left it a little slightly.